Shalom, this is Onya. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the curses of the Law of Moses. This subject is particularly relevant for today because many people do not think these curses apply to them when in fact they do. And these curses actually show that they are not accepted in God's sight. They are actually condemned, damned, rejected by Yahuwah, our Creator. When we look in the Law of Moses, it gives us clear information, clear detail about the permanency of these things, of these curses, through all generations, and that these curses would remain as a reminder that they are not in line with, with God's requirements. So when we see that we are in judgment, when we are being punished for our sins, that's supposed to lead us to repent, to forsake our sin, to forsake our disobedience. When it does not do that, it'll just get worse and worse and worse until eventually you will die in a state of sin, uncleanness, non-repentance. Now this message of judgment and repentance is not popular amongst Christianity. It is not popular amongst Messianic Judaism either. It is not popular amongst pretty much any group out there. Why? Because it condemns them all. It condemns them all because they are all under the same curses. Okay? So when we look at the curses in the Law of Moses, what do we find? We find that it says if you obey the Law of Moses, if you obey the commandments, you will be blessed with good life, good health, prosperity. Now, note, this is not prosperity gospel in that if you are not prosperous, if you are not perfectly healthy, then that 100% guarantees you are a sinner. It is not necessarily the case. What it is saying that if you obey God's commandments, you will not cause yourself any health problems, and you will not cause yourself any problems. Others might sin against you. So, for instance, in the book of Job, we know that Job was sinned against. But he did not do anything to cause himself to be harmed. He did not do anything to, to cause his children to die, or to, for his body to be all plagued with all that horrible sickness. He was sinned against. So, note, we can be sinned against, and that can harm our health. So that is not us being cursed by disobedience. That is someone else cursing us unfairly, unrighteously. And we can all it can also be caused by by accidents of nature. So for instance, let's say there is I don't know, there is a flood or something and you're caught in the midst of it. Well, you might get sick, and you didn't do anything wrong. It was an accident, uh, a power of nature. Or if you are left out in the cold all for a very long time because of a, a horrible snowstorm, and you can't get much heat, much food, and so you are in an unhealthy environment because of the very frigid temperatures. Very likely to perhaps give you pneumonia or some other type of sickness related to low temperatures. So, that needs to be emphasized, first of all, that it does not 100% mean that no sickness will happen to you, no harm will happen to you. But what it means is you will not cause yourself any harm. So, we need to ask ourselves, why 
so much harm is being done to people. The thing is, science and logic, and it's just obvious, common sense, that nothing happens randomly. There is always a cause for everything that happens, okay? So, one action will lead to an effect, a result. So, all health problems, listen people, all health problems are related to a physical cause. And this physical cause is a negative health effect. It is something that has gone wrong physically, materially. So something has actually gone wrong with your body. It's not just a magic thing that happens randomly without any rhyme or reason. So if you know the cause of the health problem, you can prevent it and or heal it, depending on what the health problem is. Now, it is the case that we, we need to ask ourselves, how are all these horrible diseases happening? Cancers and mental illnesses, which are very often reminiscent of demon possession or psychosis. So, how are these things happening? How are people getting so sick? Heart attacks? Well, it's pretty obvious that these are self-caused things, okay? So when you live a foolish lifestyle, when you live a unhealthy lifestyle, and you're in ignorance, you're in ignorance because you don't realize the full implications of the actions you're doing. You don't realize how unhealthy the things you're doing actually are. When you're living an unhealthy lifestyle, when you're subjecting yourself to uncleanness, unhealthiness, you are causing all these problems in your body. One of the main things that, that is, it's proven, uh, that causes these horrible problems is the food you eat. So why are people, so many people getting heart disease? Because they're eating crap. That's why so many people are obese, overweight in the United States of America and in other advanced nations. They're so advanced, they're dying of cancer. Wonderful. If they were really so advanced, then they wouldn't be so stupid as to kill themselves slowly by doing foolish things they don't even have to do when there is food available which tastes just as good and is sufficient for health. People will dismiss eating healthy because of it being the price cost. But I have news for you. Pretty much, you can cut out almost anything in your life that, that costs a lot of money. You do not need all these things. You might think you need them because your priorities are not Accurate. They are out of line. Why? Because you value more comfort. You value comfort your... So, with fast food, it's all about you want it on your time. Convenience. Same thing with almost every other thing in life. Everything that you have financially that you are paying for is usually linked to a convenience or a luxury that you desire. But you do not need these luxuries. In ancient times, the prophets were persecuted. They lived in the wild, homeless. They lived in dens and caves. But they obeyed God. They were blessed for their faithfulness. And they did not suffer like everyone else is suffering. In, they did not cause themselves to suffer. They suffered at the hands of other people. But they didn't cause themselves these ridiculous things that people are causing themselves. So, the food that you guys are eating and causing yourselves all these health problems, you do not have to eat it. You can eat healthy food. How can you cut back on expenses? First of all, you get rid of the car. You don't need a car. No, you say you do need a car for transportation. Actually, no. For thousands of years, people have lived without a car. Animals to this day live without a car, people, and they are perfectly fine. They don't have even money either. 
So mon no money, no cars, animals are fine. Many humans still to this day do not have cars. Cars are a luxury. Furthermore, there are other means of transportation, such as bikes, walking, and public transportation system, like a bus, or a train, or a plane, or whatnot. There are various ways to get around if you need to get somewhere in an emergency, or in a regular situation, like, say, commuting to work. There are ways, such as moving closer to where you work, or not working at a sinful job in the first place, because most people work at sinful jobs. So, with all these priority, when we put the proper perspective of priorities in life, we realize that all these things we're doing is cursing ourselves. We are cursing ourselves by disobeying God. Now, people may say, but if I don't have money, if I don't get, I don't, if I don't have a job, how am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? For my family and myself, I need to eat. I need clothes to wear. I got to go to this job, even though it's sinful. I got to do it. Well, what does scripture have to say about that? Let's see what it says. In Matthew 6, we see as follows. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, what is mammon? Mammon is money, according to the scholars. So, Mammon, money, you cannot serve both God and money. It's clearly serving God is obeying Him, following His will. Serving money is going after the pursuits of money, the things of this world. So, that verse says you cannot serve both God and money. So keep that in mind when I read the verses that follow. Now, the, again, these are the verses, it's in the same passage, same context, so it's being connected here. So let me reread that verse and follow through with what comes after it. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more va of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So, this is an amazing passage because, for, well, first of all, let's discuss the what might be called the, the lawless antinomian interpretation that some Christians might give. They'll, they might say something like, do not worry about what you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will put on. In other words, don't worry about the law of Moses. 
don't worry about the food laws in the law of Moses about, you know, do not eat unclean animals. Yeah. Christians might say, oh, the, the Messiah is saying, don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about what clothes you put on your body. The law of Moses says certain clothes you're not allowed to wear. Oh, don't worry about that. You can wear whatever you want. That's clearly what not, not what the passage is talking about. It's clearly talking about having clothing that is sufficient for your needs. Having food which is sufficient for your needs. Do not worry about having what you need to survive. Do not worry because God will provide that for you if first you seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then all those things will be added to you. And also, notice, he says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. So it's not the Jews who seek after, What shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear? It's talking about the Gentiles. Because it is the Gentiles who justify eating crap more than the Jews. But in our days, the Jews are guilty of this as well. Because the Jews have been intermixed among the Gentiles, so that they are now not very separate from them, and are under the same curses, unfortunately for them. So, therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the sinful people seek after. They worry about what having a M making ends meet. They worry about having enough money to survive. Why do they worry about that? Because they put money and surviving more important than, being God than obeying God's commandments in His law. It's very clear that we are to obey Him first. We are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man should not live on bread alone, but that's what people like to do. They try to live on bread alone, rather than living on Him. We obey Him, that's our life. Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, And you will again obey the voice of the Lord, and do all His commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good, as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God, to keep his commands and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear, and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land when you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So, this passage is clearly talking about obeying the commandments of the law of Moses, and it says obeying the commandments is our life. So for those who disobey the law when they're in bondage or when they are in difficult circumstances, when they disobey the law in order to have life, that's the exact opposite of what this chapter says. We are told by Moses that 
obeying the law is our life. So to disobey it in order to live is counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. And for those who are not convinced that it's talking about the law of Moses in this chapter, it clearly says in verse 10 that I read, again, I'll read uh, a little bit in verse 9, but, uh, For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers if you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. If you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. What's the book of the law? It's clearly the law of Moses, the book of Deuteronomy. So, Deuteronomy 30, Matthew chapter 6, it's all saying the same thing. Obey God's commandments first, worry about money, and having a livelihood later. That comes afterwards. And if you can't have a livelihood, if you can't have a... Uh, a uh, comfy life, if you can't have money with eh, or with obeying God's commandments, then you don't have the money. You get rid of the money. Money is not the only thing that matters in life. And as the passage said in Matthew 6, do not worry about this because the animals are fed. Does not God feed the animals? How much more than he will feed you if you are faithful to him, obey his commandments. So to disobey his commandments because you don't have enough money doesn't make sense because he feeds the animals, he provides what they need. So why would you sin against his law and his commandments for the sake of money when you don't need money because animals don't need money? It's common sense. Just look at nature and you'll see God takes care of the animals. He takes care of the plants. And they don't have money. They don't have a job. So, now, am I saying you should not try to find a job? You should not try to get money? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is there are priorities in life. So that if you have to sin, if you have to disobey God in order to get a job or to get money, then don't do it. Because you're going to curse yourself. Because all sin leads to death. The wages of sin is death, as the New Testament says. So, to sin for temporary comforts doesn't make sense when it's going to give you eternal punishment in the long run. We are told by the Messiah that it is better to lose a limb than to go whole, than to uh, live our life, or excuse me, it is better to lose a limb and be spared from the punishment of hellfire than to be full-bodied, you're preserved intact, all your limbs, but then to go into hell, the hellfire, which punishes an eternal punishment. So, What are you going to choose? Obey his commandments or sin? It should be obvious that when those are the two options, obedience must be the option that we need to do. Now, I'm going to conclude this, this discussion here by reading from the Law of Moses the curses that it's going to apply and also from the Book of Jubilees, the curses that are a sign and a witness and a testimony against everyone. Everyone. This applies to everyone. If you have, if you're causing yourself these problems, you are against God. You are disobeying Him. You are cursed, and you're going to have eternal damnation unless you repent and stop disobeying His commandments. Return to Him. So. Okay, so, continuing here. I'm going to now read through, first of all, Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
this is going to tell you the blessings and the curses for whether you obey the law of Moses. And it's going to show you that this proves Christianity is not of God. Uh, the current state of Christianity, that is, mainstream Christianity. They are not accepted by God because they are cursed by God, as this passage proves. So, now I always shall read. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today. Who was saying that? Moses was saying that. All the commandments which I command you today, that is, the law of Moses. So, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be, shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket, and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses <coughs> and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only, and not be beneath, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them. That is the law of Moses again, which he commanded them today. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. Again, the law of Moses. It shall come to pass, if you do not do that. Now all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall you be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall you be when you come in, and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly, because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, and with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish. And your heavens which are which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be iron. The Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. From the heaven it shall come down on you till you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them, and you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and no one shall frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with the scab, and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness, 
and blindness and confusion of heart. And you shall grope at noonday as a blind man gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall be only oppressed and plundered continually, and no one shall save you. You shall betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not gather its grapes. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from before you, and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, and you shall have no one to rescue them. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long, and there shall be no strength in your hand. A nation whom you have not known shall eat the fruit of your land and the produce of your labor, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually. So you shall be driven mad because of the sight which your eyes see. The Lord will strike you in the knees and on the legs with severe boils which cannot be healed, and from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. The Lord will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone, and you shall become an astonishment, a, by, a proverb and a byword among all nations which the Lord will drive you. You shall carry much seed out of the field, but gather little in, for the locusts shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and tend them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil, for your olives shall drop off. You shall beget sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. Locusts shall consume shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder, and on your descendants forever. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose language you will not understand, nation, a nation of fierce countenance, which does not respect the elderly, nor show favor to the young. And they shall eat the increase of your livestock and the produce of your land until you are destroyed. They shall not leave your grain or new wine or oil, or the increase of your cattle, or the offspring of your flocks, until they have destroyed you. If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you are afraid, and they shall cling to you. And also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. You shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven in multitude, because you would not obey the voice of the Lord your God. And it shall be that just as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from off the land which you go to possess. Then the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. And among those nations you shall find no rest, nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. Your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear day and night, and have no assurance of life. In the morning you shall say, Oh, that it were evening. And at evening you shall say, Oh, that it were morning, because of the fear which terrifies your heart, and because of the sight which your eyes see. And the Lord will take you back to Egypt in ships, by the way of which I said to you, You shall never see it again. 
And there you shall be offered for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but no one will buy you. So, first of all, obviously not all these curses apply to every single sinner. So, for example, the Christians. All these curses have not happened to Christians. So is that, con is that against what I'm saying? No, because here's why. These curses were said to... It, were, it was given as a representation overall of the, of the chaotic and corrupted and plagued state of Israel in consequence of disobeying the commandments of God. So, not everyone who disobeys the law will be sick. But if they, if the more, the more the law is disobeyed, the more corrupt society gets as a whole. And the more negative consequences that will happen as a result. So these curses are for the whole of Israel, or for the whole nation. But these can be extrapolated to the Gentiles as well. Not everything about these can apply to the Gentiles because some of it was specifically for Israel. Like, you will go back to Egypt. Well, the Gentiles were never in Egypt, so they can't go back to Egypt. So, each of these curses have to be understood in their context. But it is clear that the vast majority of these curses apply when various commandments are disobeyed. So, I'm going to highlight a couple of these things again just to make it clear. This is describing Christians. This is describing so-called followers of God who are supposedly blessed because they are born again, but if they were truly filled with the Holy Spirit, if they were truly faithful, then they would, not be un they would not be cursed by God. Because according to the New Testament, Christ came to free us from the curse of the law, from the bondage of the law. Well, if we're freed from the bondage of the law, why are we still being cursed by it? Why are we still suffering under its damnation, under its condemnation? So I'm going to highlight a couple of these things that I read from that chapter, just to emphasize how this is perfectly describing, some of these things perfectly describe Christianity. So, for example, it says, The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, and with mildew. So that's curses of sickness right there. This is a very good description of all kinds of people, including Messianics and Christians. It says, The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with the scab, and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. So what does it mean, he will strike you with tumors from which you cannot be healed? Okay, so cancer. He will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with the scab, and with the itch. All these are, these are skin diseases, these are cancers, because it's tumors which, from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. Okay, so what does this describe? Christians getting all these mental diseases like Alzheimer's and other dementia. This is not a state of believers who are faithful to God. They would not be cursed if they are truly of God. And yet they are cursed with these diseases of madness and other mental illnesses. Dementia, you name it. This does not describe a blessed people. This describes a cursed people. Uh, so let's see here. 
And again, the Lord will strike you in the knees and on the legs with severe boils, which cannot be healed, and from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. Now, also it says, no, it says, Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. That is clear that these curses did not get abolished or done away with as the Christians will teach, that the Law of Moses doesn't apply anymore. Because if the Law of Moses did not apply anymore, these curses would not be happening to them. And yet they are. So, moreover, all these curses shall come upon you. And they are. Because, why? Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep His commandments and His statutes which He commanded you in the Law of Moses. So, forever. And it is still happening. We are told, they shall be upon you. That's a sign and a wonder. These curses will be upon you forever. And on your descendants, forever. Okay? And it also says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart, for the abundance of everything. So, it's clear that Christianity as a whole is not blessed by God, but is cursed by God. Why? Because they disobey His commandments. They disobey His law. Because it was never abolished. This is proof. The sign forever, and it's still there against the Christians. It is against them. If they weren't cursed by God, they would be blessed. And yet they are horribly cursed. So cursed, they suffer majorly. Now, let's see, well, the final thing of this, of the passage that I read that's relevant here, is, notice it says, If you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, the book of Deuteronomy that I'm quoting from, that you may fear this glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. Moreover, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. This couldn't more perfectly describe the state of Christianity. They suffer from all these things equally with all the Gentiles. They all suffer this. Extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, serious and prolonged sicknesses, the diseases of Egypt, every sickness and every plague, all these sicknesses are happening in an unbelievable variety, and they're happening to Christians. So, Christianity in today's time is not blessed, it is majorly cursed. Now, I'm going to read another passage. This is the Book of Jubilees, which I accept as Scripture. There is evidence that it is Scripture, quoted in the New Testament as an authoritative source, other examples. But, Regardless, this is a prophecy of Christianity and, in general, all people who are rejected by God. It perfectly describes it. It perfectly describes their wickedness. It perfectly describes their punishment for disobeying His law. So I'll read it. It says, And he, Abraham that is, lived three jubilees and four weeks of years, 175 years, and completed the days of his life, being old and full of days. For the days of the forefathers of their life were nineteen jubilees. And after the flood, they began to grow less than nineteen jubilees, and to decrease in jubilees, and to grow old quickly. 
and to be full of their days by reason of manifold tribulation and the wickedness of their ways, with the exception of Abraham. For Abraham was perfect in all his deeds with the Lord, and well pleasing in righteousness all the days of his life. And behold, he did not complete four jubilees in his life, when he had grown old by reason of the wickedness of others, that is, and was full of his days. And all generations which shall arise from this time until the day of the great judgment shall grow old quickly, before they complete two jubilees, and their knowledge shall forsake them by reason of their old age, and all their knowledge shall vanish away. And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, they shall say regarding him, He has lived long, and the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation, and there is no peace. For calamity falls on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil tidings on evil tidings, and illness on illness, and all evil judgments such as these, one with another, illness and overthrow, and snow and frost, and ice and fever, and chills, and torpor, and famine, and death, and sword, and captivity, and all kinds of calamities and pains. And all these shall come on an evil generation, which transgresses on the earth. Their works are uncleanness and fornication, and pollution and abominations. Then they shall say, The days of the forefathers were many, unto a thousand years, and were good. But behold, the days of our life, if a man has lived many, are threescore years and ten. And if he is strong, fourscore years, and those evil, and there is no peace in the days of this evil generation. And in that generation, the sons shall convict their fathers and their elders of sin and unrighteousness and of the words of their mouth and the great wickedness which they perpetrate. And concerning their forsaking the covenant which the Lord made between them and him, that they should observe and do all his commandments and his ordinances and all his laws, without departing either to the right hand or to the left. For all have done evil, and every mouth speaks iniquity, and all their works are an uncleanness and abomination, and all their ways are pollution, uncleanness, and destruction. The whole of the earth shall be destroyed on account of all their works, and there shall be no seed of the vine and no oil, for their works are altogether faithless, and they shall all perish together, beasts and cattle and birds and all the fish of the sea, on account of the children of men. And they shall strive with one another, the young with the old and the old with the young, the poor with the rich, the lowly with the great, and the beggar with the prince, on account of the law and the covenant. For they have forgotten commandment and covenant and feasts and months, and months, and Sabbaths, and Jubilees, and all judgments. And they shall stand swords and war to turn them back into the way. But they shall not return until much blood has been shed on the earth, one by another. And those who have escaped shall not return from their wickedness to the way of righteousness, but they shall all exalt themselves to the deceit and wealth, that they may each take all that is his neighbor's, and they shall name the great name, but not in truth, and not in righteousness. And they shall, dwell, uh, they shall defile the Holy of Holies with their uncleanness and the corruption of their pollution. And a great punishment shall befall the deeds of this generation from the Lord. And he will give them over to the sword and to judgment and to captivity, and to be plundered and devoured. And he will wake up against them the sinners of the Gentiles, who have neither mercy nor compassion, and who shall respect the person of... None, neither old nor young, nor anyone. For they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men. And they shall use violence against Israel and transgression against Jacob, and much blood shall be shed upon the earth. And there shall be none to gather and none to bury. In those days they shall cry aloud and call to pray, call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the Gentiles, but none shall be saved, and the heads of the children shall be white with gray hair, and a child of three weeks shall appear old like a man of one hundred years, and their stature shall be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. And in those days the children shall begin to study the laws, and to seek the commandments, and to return to the path of righteousness, and the days shall begin to grow many and increase amongst those children of men till their days nigh to, draw nigh to one thousand years, and to a greater number of years than before was the number of the days. And there shall be no old man nor one who is satisfied with his days. For all shall be children and youths, and all their days they shall complete and live in peace and joy. And there shall be no Satan nor any evil destroyer. For all their days shall be 
days of blessing and healing. At that time, the Lord will heal his servants, and they shall rise up and see great peace, and drive out their adversaries, and the righteous shall see and be thankful, and rejoice with joy forever and ever, and shall see all their judgments and all their curses on their enemies. And their bones shall rest in the earth, and their spirits shall have much joy. And they shall know that it is the Lord who executes judgment and shows mercy to hundreds and thousands and to all that love him. And do thou, Moses, write down these words, for thus are they written, and they record on the heavenly tablets for testimony for the generations forever. Now, the passage that I read from the book of Jubilees, I'm going to highlight a couple things from it that I believe speaks strikingly to the description of Christianity and the rest of the world in general, all the sinners who, this is clear that they are under the curse, the curses of the law. Now these curses from Jubilees are very closely linked to the whole theme of the sicknesses as a curse from Deuteronomy chapter 28. And so, I'll read the relevant part again. So it says, And all generations which shall arise from this time until the day of the great judgment shall grow old quickly before they complete two jubilees. Now two jubilees would be basically a hundred, a hundred years. And their knowledge shall forsake them by reason of their old age, and all their knowledge shall vanish away. And in those days, if a man live a jubilee and a half of years, so about 75 years, a little bit less, they shall say regarding him, he has lived long, and the greater part of his days are pain and sorrow and tribulation, and there is no peace. For calamity follows on calamity, and wound on wound, and tribulation on tribulation, and evil tidings on evil tidings and illness on illness, and all evil judgments such as these, one with another, illness and overthrow, and snow, and frost, and ice, and fever, and chills, and torpor, and famine, and death, and sword, and captivity, and all kinds of calamities and pains. And all these shall come on an evil generation which transgresses on the earth. Their works are uncleanness, and fornication, and pollution, an abomination. So, let's see, and then also, um, and it connects it with, uh, in verse 16, it says, well, let, let me read it, uh, some of that again. Um, so then after, in verse 15, it says, then they shall say, The days of the forefathers were many unto a thousand years, and were good. But behold, the days of our life, if a man lived, has lived many, are three score years and ten, so seventy years. And if he is strong, four score years, eighty years, and those evil. And there is no peace in the days of the, this evil generation. And... In that generation, the sons shall convict their fathers and their elders of sin and unrighteousness and of the words of their mouth and the great wickedness which they perpetrate and concerning their forsaking the covenant which the Lord made between them and him that they should observe and do all his commandments and his ordinances and all his laws without departing either to the right hand or to the left. For all have done evil, and every mouth speaks iniquity, and all their works are an uncleanness and an abomination, and all their ways are pollution, uncleanness, and destruction. So, this is a very powerful passage. It just, it strikingly captures the state of Christianity. It goes on to talk about how they abandoned the law of Moses. They abandoned the covenant, the feasts, the months, the Sabbath, the jubilees, and all the judgments of the, law, of the law. So when they did that, jubilees is here connecting that, just as Deuteronomy chapter 28 connects it with, 
the law being rejected and us being cursed as a result of the law being rejected. And at the very end we see that there will be a change of of these things when we repent and return to the obedience then we will not be cursed with the sicknesses anymore and we will live very long lives even longer than the forefathers lived so at the very end also it says and do thou Moses write down these words for thus are they written and they record on the heavenly tablets for a testimony for the generations forever. So just like Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28 said, these curses are to be a sign unto us forever for the generations. So this is clear proof, Deuteronomy chapter 28 in this passage from Jubilees prophesying of the curses that would come as a result of disobeying the law of Moses. And Christianity and Gentiles in general disobey the law of Moses almost every single thing they do in their lives. They disobey it to the full, to the max. They don't even have to try. They do it by nature because they have accustomed themselves to such wickedness and such rebellion against his, his ways. So, it's clear this, these passages condemn and curse all people who are suffering from these illnesses. The, as I said, the only exception being if someone poisons you or if there's a freak accident of nature. So, for instance, if, if you're walking and something falls onto your head and smashes your brains open, well, yeah, you might have a mental disability. You might have a... You might have some type of dementia because it was an accident. But otherwise... Or, you know, or someone might... Someone might take a hammer and smash it into your head. Yeah, you might have a, an illness, a mental illness because of that. But otherwise, if you have a mental illness, you have sinned. It is your fault. You, because you disobeyed the law of Moses, you caused yourself these horrible things. And unless you repent and obey his law, when you die, that'll be it, and you will remain in a state of damnation and condemnation. For these sicknesses, it is clear, these curses are a sign that you are rejected by God. So if any of you have these sicknesses and you're not being sinned against by someone who poisoned you and you didn't have a crazy freak thing of nature happen to you, then you are evil. You are lawless, rebellion against his law, and you will suffer punishment as a result for it. Now, the problem is also messianics who think they keep the law of Moses and Orthodox Jews are suffering these same punishments. They're suffering these same curses. And why are they suffering these same curses? Because they are not obeying the law. They think they're obeying the law, but they don't understand what the law's teachings actually truly are. So for instance, the laws for unclean animals. They don't realize that in those very laws, it gives principles and details of things that they are not keeping. It, it talks about how a seed is polluted. It says if the uncleanness of an animal gets absorbed into a seed when it's wet, then the seed is forbidden to eat. So the plant is forbidden to eat. And yet, people eat these plants, they don't even know about these, these laws, because they're not paying attention to what the laws say. But if you go to Leviticus chapter 11, and Deuteronomy chapter 14, you will see clearly the uncleanness laws listed out for you. 
especially in regards to what foods you're supposed to eat. And when you look at those laws, you're going to see things that people are not keeping. It's clear from these from the passage of Leviticus chapter 11 that the food laws are for health. In other words, if it's unhealthy to eat it, it's a sin. That is very clear from Leviticus chapter 11. It goes into great detail about health in that passage. It goes into great detail about health and con it connects it with health in Leviticus chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15. All the laws about uncleanness there are strikingly connected with health. So it's clear that uncleanness is a health issue. It's not just a ceremonial issue, as some Christians will say, because these pa these teachings of the law are clearly demonstrate. You can clearly demonstrate that they correspond with scientific laws and common sense principles of health. So the fact is, according to Scripture, if you eat anything unhealthy, you are sinning, and you are causing you're going to be causing sicknesses for yourself. So if you eat anything that's not certified organic or equivalent to it, then you're sinning. Why? Because if it's not certified organic or an equivalent measure, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a certified organic, but it has to be the same quality. So a local farmer, for instance, who does the same procedures of farming that organic farmers do. As long as you know they're doing the same things, you can have it. But otherwise, it needs to be certified organic. And why? Because of pesticides and, and toxic chemicals and fertilizers used. These toxic fertilizers and toxic chemicals, toxic pesticides, are getting absorbed into the very food that you're eating. Now, these toxic Chemicals are so toxic that when the insects eat them, they die. Why? So why are you going to be eating things that are killing insects? Because it's so bad for that. Now, obviously, we, are, we have stronger bodies, so it's not going to kill us to the same extent it's going to kill the insects. But the point is, if it's poison, they are intentionally poisoning, poisoning food to kill off insects. Which means the food is not pure. It is defiled. It is unclean. Because it is poisoned. Natural food is clean and can be eaten by insects. Any food that humans eat in nature, naturally, can be eaten by insects. But this modern food that, that we have created for ourselves cannot be eaten by insects with all these toxic stuff in it. They are dying off. We're seeing bees die off in large numbers. Why? Because of these pesticides and also because of genetically modified organisms. There was a strong connection between these things. Scientists have genetically altered the food we eat. The vast majority of all food that people eat is genetically altered, either genetically modified or genetically mutated. They're different under U.S. law. But they're both, they both involve very similar principles of abominating the DNA code by altering it with unnatural means. And when we foolish humans think we know everything and can change the DNA structure willy-nilly of any type of food, and then we expect to be okay when we eat these foods, that is very naive and foolish and stupid. Because when we do that, we have no idea what we're doing when we're tampering with the DNA structure. The DNA structure is perfectly constructed by our Creator. He knew exactly the healthy, sufficient DNA coding genetic material that is needed for these things to be healthy. And He knew exactly what the DNA structure and genetic material would be for things to be unhealthy. So when we're tampering with these things out of our ignorance, when we by no means have 
all know all knowing understanding of science and nutrition when we are ignorantly and blindly altering the genetic material of the food we're eating it's probably going to cause health problems unless we are unless we luck out and we perfectly alter the DNA to something that is viable and and perfectly healthy. The odds of that happening are very small because we are not doing it out of an intelligent, a divinely intelligent mindset. And our scientific understanding of nutrition is very flawed and insufficient, as is clear because so many people are still dying of cancer and all these horrible diseases. Now, if we knew so much about nutrition, then this wouldn't be happening. If we knew so much about health, if we were such great experts at health and nutrition, we would be preventing all these illnesses and all these diseases, but we're not. And they still don't have a clue as to how to stop all, all this. And that's because they're altering so many things that they can't pinpoint the, the causes very well of many sicknesses. So, we got eating crap. So stop eating poisons that are being put into the food. Stop eating artificial things created because they are not naturally designed and things not naturally designed are, are not sufficient enough for good health for our bodies. The, the things that were naturally designed for the goodness of our bodies that is what we should be eating. That is what is good for our health. And so, also, genetically modified foods we should not be eating. Genetically mutated foods we should not be eating. And there are other things too, but it's very clear that the vast majority of these things are not being kept by Messianics and by... Orthodox Jews. The Orthodox Jews and the Messianic Jews still eat, for the most part, they eat genetically modified foods. They eat genetically mutated foods, because even organic foods can be mutated genetically, unfortunately, at least in the United States of America. They eat foods that are not organic. They eat foods that are pesticide-ridden and chemically impure with all these horrible disgusting toxins in them they for meat and dairy it's full of unhealthy antibiotics drugs that are unnatural toxic so many things are corrupting the very foods we eat that there are very few pure foods left on the market to eat and this is spreading so much that it's even harming some of the food in the wild. So, it's clear that when we look at the foods that Messianics and Orthodox Jews eat, that they think they're keeping the Law of Moses, but they're not because they're eating unclean food. They think they're not eating unclean food because they're not eating pork, because they're not eating shrimp, but that's stupid because that's not what the unclean laws are about. They're about uncleanness in general, unhealthiness in general. When you eat crap, you're going to feel like crap. You're going to get diseases and illnesses because of the crap you eat, the unclean foods you're putting into your body. There is so much else about uncleanness, the laws that are not being kept of the Law of Moses, Again, the Law of Moses commands us to be healthy. So there are so many unhealthy things that people do in life, Orthodox Jews and Messianic Jews included. This is why they are being punished with such great sicknesses. They are disobeying God's commandments. They are disobeying the Law of Moses. So, with that said, I call everyone to repentance. Return to obedience, return to the law of Moses, return to God, return to his ways, stop defiling your bodies, stop making excuses and saying, 
you don't have enough money to eat healthy and you or that you can't afford it just stop making those stupid excuses and start obeying God's commandments or else you're gonna get all these horrible diseases that you fear you fear getting these diseases I know that none of you want these diseases but you're gonna get cancer you're gonna get horrible disabilities later in life physical disabilities mental disabilities you're gonna screw up your body you're going to file yourself completely and you're gonna kill yourself and you will be damned eternally for your foolishness you will be cursed you are cursed right now and the curse will remain on you until you stop breaking his commandments and return to full obedience of the law of Moses thank you for watching this video and I hope you stay tuned for any future videos I put out this message was not is not popular but I had to give it because there is increasing amount of people who are suffering from illnesses that, that I love and care about but these people don't realize that they're I have some sympathy for you but mostly I don't because you guys are being stupid and and it's your fault so stop disobeying God or else you will get what you deserve death and horrible sicknesses that you have reaped for yourself and so that's all I had to say for this video and I hope I scare some of you all into waking up and respecting yourselves respecting your family respecting your bodies and honoring yourselves and seeking what true and pure health actually is and seeking purity purity of body and purity of spirit Shalom this is Omnia and I appreciate the time you have taken to watch this video